Hello everyone, welcome to Fablehaven Age of Wonders, or the Demon Lord Blint has claimed his victory in the Age of Chaos and now stands within the Immaterium right next to Aratus. I'm sure they have plenty of things to discuss. But from the ashes rise a new champion, and so I asked, and you answered our champion, shall be Jaina Proudmoore, the daughter of the sea. Now, this is also going to be my first modded playthrough. And the good news is that I have some mods that work. I tested them out. Fully functional, probably. Bad news, I wasn't able to incorporate modded tomes. Now, I probably could have, but none of them have been updated for the Watcher update, which, you know, tweaked a lot of things about the tomes. And uh, so there have been reports of bugs around them, and I was like, I just don't want to deal with it. So, unfortunately, there are no modded tomes. One of them, two, I suppose, are very... They basically exemplify Jaina and the Kul as a whole, so it was kind of disappointing. But I didn't want to break anything during the run and, you know, leave a series half-finished or whatever because of broken stuff or frustration. So, we're just going to leave that out and play with the vanilla tomes. Sorry about that. But it is what it is. So, we're going into an island realm. Of course, the Kulturians were the masters of the ocean, the greatest naval force that the Alliance has ever seen. And I suppose currently sees after the events of BFA. But uh, we'll be going into islands in a frozen realm. This world climate is harsh and cold, and it is inhabited by the dead. For there is rampant undeath here. My fellow Warcraft fans may be able to tell where this is going, but it has a wondrous past. It does indeed, doesn't it? Oh, a few ancient cities way under the earth. And this place is influenced by the Frostlings. We're not doing Curse of Undeath again. We've done that already. And, um... Well, if we're gonna be truthful to where I'm trying to go... There wouldn't be a whole lot of free cities. So what if we do... Probably hostile houses? Let's see. There were a few random... You know what? We'll just leave it. It's fine. It's fine. There were a few random places in... You guessed it. Maybe you didn't. The Northrend Isles. Isles of Northrend? Isles of Northrend. Northrend is the northernmost continent in the Warcraft universe. It is quite inhospitable and frozen... And um, there's a particular person there. Person we may or may not see. You know, maybe. <laughs> we are going, of course, on... Uh, we'll be going into large with eight players. Classic turns, of course, of course. Let's get some ice up in here. And there will be... Doo -doo 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 -doo. We're doing brutal difficulty. Where's that? Here. But... I would like the... Okay, cool. Normal world threat. That's fine. Starting condition is normal. Why? Wait, what? Eh. <laughs> That's fine. We'll leave it as normal. It's okay. Auto combat for a resurgence. This is all fine. I think I'll leave on all of the victory conditions. We want to slow. Love slow? Sure, let's do slow. Eh, yeah, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. This all looks good. There will be seven other players, and I will not be sharing who any of them are. We'll have to find them ourselves. So let's create Jaina. I can guarantee you, though, you're never going to guess who one of them is. You can try, and you won't. <laughs> so we'll be playing, of course, as the Kul Tirans that are humans, and they are thick humans. There's actually two versions of the Kul Tirans. There's the OG version, which are basically just normal-looking humans with uh, different armor. That's good differentiation. And uh, then there are the type I'll try and create. Now, the Kulturans are a hardy race, so we'll be grabbing hardy or our body trait. It's not a particularly great body trait, but it's more hit points, and more hit points is always good. As for our mind traits... Oh, as for our mind traits, I suppose... We could do Arctic adaptation? No, no, no. They're not really in the Arctic. They're more like in a tropical-ish area. I suppose the most appropriate... 
know what? Let's try defensive tactics. They're all about being big and thick. What is that origin culture? And we will be playing as the feudal culture because we are playing with the Kulturans. Jaina, uh, well, lived a long and complicated life and at times she led mages. But now in Warcraft's present lore, she is the leader, the Lord Admiral of the Kulturans. What who are... defines their society? What is their origin culture? Why did your hair change? Is it random? <laughs> it's randomizing. Okay, don't get distracted. Culture? She is leading the Kulturans, which are pretty feudal. Pretty feudal. They have one order, one nature, which will be interesting. What Should I read what these do? Culture? Some of the structures have additional food income, and they gain benefits from standing next to each other. So we we'll stand together, and the other trait that I chose, the defensive formation, we could, uh, you know, we stand together, we hug each other. We have a great time. And they have, of course, the feudal lord of mechanic. What now, their society? the Kultirans. Your hair turned purple now. That is so distracting. <laughs> the Kultirans are experienced seafarers. No doubt about it. This screams Kultiris. And they also, they actually are not very arcane gifted. They do have magic, uh, but it's more like natural magic. The magic of the tides and the fan and all that stuff. So, I was going to go with... Great Builders is trash, but that is actually the most accurate. <laughs> like, why would I care if Quarries give me two gold? This is probably actually pretty good underground, to be honest. But I think I'm going to go with Runesmiths. And this is... My lore excuse here is they do make runes... Kind of... To guide their ships. That's the lore excuse. I'm sticking with it. And we're going to go with the Tome of Cryomancy. Now, Jaina is the most, one of the most powerful Archmages in the Warcraft universe. Mortal Mages, I should say. And she specifies her power over water. She, I think, almost exclusively uses arcane magic and um, water magic. Unfortunately, water magic is not in the base game. So, Cryomancy is going to make up for it. What is your ruling? She is a wizard king, but she is a human. So allow me to create Jaina Proudmoore. Alrighty, so here is my version of Jaina Proudmoore. I'm actually quite happy with this. There are, of course, Jaina went through many phases in her life, but um, I think this is the most accurate I can get of her current rendition. Now, of course, the armor, well, not the most accurate thing, but I felt this was the best of my choices. And of course, we're beginning with the Cryomancer staff because Jaina uses a stick. She uses ice magic. It works out perfectly. As for the Kulturans, I did what I could. I just cranked everything up to max because they are thick. And, uh, well, that's the best I could do. There is a mod to make them thicker, I think, but I was kind of afraid it would break stuff. <laughs> I'm only running four mods and I'm still worried they're going to break everything. For Kulturas, they use the anchor for their thing. I did kind of compromise on the background color. I think this one is more lore accurate, but Jaina's robes are are blue and like gold. So, eh, the price we pay. Plus, I like this more. Now, Jaina is currently the Lord Admiral of Kulturas. And of course, she is Jaina Proudmore. Now, Allow me to assemble our foes or friends, and we shall begin. And so we begin on the Isles of Northrend. Jada Proudmore. Start with the Ice Coffin and the Call to Glory. Great. Silver Bridge. No, 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 no. I actually... <laughs> I actually don't remember how to spell this correctly because the capital city of Kultiris is Borlas. I think it's this, but we always called it Borlas. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, just go with what we got. Workshop first. Don't be surprised. No one should be. We have one scout. Who's over the Bannerman? We have a scout, a bannerman, double stabbies, and an archer, so we can get another scout going right now. Perhaps two. I could even boost that. 
Why can I... Oh, right, we have normal starting resources. For some reason. Where are we on the map? We are in the center, of course. Of course, where else would we be? So, of course, our duty is to find the... Why is it so hard to see on this map? Hello? There's so much fog of war when I zoom out. Should pick that up on my scout. There's a lot going on down here. That a uh, ooh, hmm. Double convert in the same place. I hate to see it. We'll move this way. Begin our arcane research now. Of course, we began with cryomancy. Ooh, do we start with the white witch or the frostblade? So we'll start with the white witch, I think. Blizzard also. This could be really good. An early blizzard? Blizzard also, the people who created the Warcraft universe, so maybe it is appropriate. Despite their more recent fall from grace, that's a that could be a video in itself. That could be a video series within itself. Ah, that end turn time. This should be an easy auto. Let's see what happens. Almost killed my pikemen, but I will take it. The visor of Farsights. And we have met the apprehensive Bakshir. Duke Frederick Stratford of the city of Bakshir greets you nervously, as if they might invoke your wrath at any given moment. Well, you might. You're hanging a skull from your belt. Well met, Jaina Proudmore. We cool... Tyrus. Oh, if you're going to say it that way, I should have said cult Tyrans, huh? Well, we cult Tyrus of Bakshir have heard many stories about the torment of shadows you went through and the power you wield. We hate to imagine what you forsook to earn it. Hopefully you will curb any potentially power-hungry tendencies as you make your way through these lands. Fun fact. There was once a popular fan theory that Jaina was in fact a dreadlord, which is basically like a greater demon of deception and all that. In fact, the theory gained so much steam that um, Blizzard released a dreadlord skin in Heroes of the Storm. May that game rest in pieces. So that was fun. <laughs> cool. Hmm. Probably have to fight this one. They killed the healthy pikemen? Game. 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 Come now, game. Stand together. My champions. And only partially because I'm going to heal you. This one. Oh, right. You have to be in the center. Well, that's fine. Perfectly calculated. I forgot how this worked. Now, I have played the feudal culture before. I've, in fact, I have played every culture now. Which is fantastic. So, uh, I do know how these guys like to play together. They like to work things out. But uh, we'll see if it comes back to me. I recall the Bannerman being exceptionally powerful. And I will go ahead and call to glory, to greatness. That Ice Coffin could have also been a good shout. We have Freezing Blasts. Because we, of course, have the Stick of Doom. But you are immune to being frozen. Are you too immune to being frozen? You are all immune to frozen. Okay. Respects. By which, of course, I mean... Fuck you. Okay, we'll stand here. Face that way. Defense. Wow, it's so hard to move here. What the fuck? Are we sure I didn't go crazy with the, the optional settings? Ooh, pain, suffering, agony. All right, we have to win now. Now we win. That means Ice Coffin wouldn't work either, huh? Hmm. All right. We'll kill this. I half expected to get, uh... Oh, it's slow. There's no, uh... You know what that means? There's no retaliation. 
Oh, but as I was expecting, as I was saying, I half expected it to get the uh, game event in there. Should have done that first. I forgot you do shattered stuff. Maybe we should have gone over their abilities again. Oh, there goes the pikeman. Well, I too killed the healthy pikeman. Or not. You return from the grave. Why do you return from the grave? I don't know. Did I break it? Am I that good? I have to kill this. 50-50? Perfect. I don't know. I think I had that earlier in a different campaign where I was like, hmm, shouldn't you guys be dead dead? Yes, hit the archers. Okay. Well, that was curious. I'm sure the mods have nothing to do with it. There is one mod that affects units that I'm using, which is the... the cultural unit mod. Let's expand with food first. Food onto food. Fantastic. That also boosts the vendor. We got bonus production, which finished off of that. I can also boost you here. We can go straight into stone mason, I suppose. Could even attract pop, and I think I will to get that. Quarries are important. You need a you need a second farm though. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I might actually change this later to a forester because these can only be quarries. Yeah, Arctic adaptation might not have been a bad idea. Lady Jaina Proudmore, go ahead and take this visor. And you shall be the Lord. Okay, Jaina went through a few phases. And uh, knowledge, magic, and war are all appropriate for her. I think I'm going to take the Lord of War, though. I want this. We'll, we'll get this soon. I'm sure we get that as soon as possible, huh? We'll grab Lord of War. Our next one will be the Lord of Knowledge. So Jaina went through this period of time, which I suppose I'll talk on more when we meet certain characters. Spoiler alert? Question mark? But uh, she went through this period of time in... Was it Cataclysm? I think it was Cataclysm. Where she was on a warpath. No, it was Mrs. Pandaria. Where she was, she, she was on a warpath. She was ready to butcher the Horde. In fact, she partially did. She kicked out all representatives of the Horde in Dalaran. There's even a special mission about it, trying to es uh, escort the Sun Reavers? That's what they're called, the Sun Reavers? Out of Dalaran and away from Jaina's insanity. It's a risky battle, and we were felled. Wow, okay. Well. We were felled. How are we felled? I don't know. But we were. It should be pretty straightforward. We get... We get the spears on the, the big boy. Dragon. We buff up, we kill. Yeah. Easy. Hmm. Unfortunately, I think everything here is immune to being frozen. I'm just gonna move up to check. I'm not gonna actually attack from here. You can be frozen. Ooh, that's good to know. Now they can reach me, but that's probably fine. I think we take another turn of chilling. One more turn to chill. Uno chill. It's coming back to me. I remember in the uh, the Erratus playthrough, the very first one, the very first playthrough, when I was but a babe, a naive child, learning the ways of the world. <laughs> I, uh... I guess I can stand here. 
Oh, I shouldn't. I should go here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I used Erratus to tank, which, you know, had mixed results. No retaliation because you're slowed, bitch. Uh, which had mixed results, but... It, um... It, it worked. He's, he's a decent health pool. Now, Jaina, unlike him, is not mounted. So the reason I went here in this formation was because these guys would have to move forward no matter where they went. Oof. And now the Boneworm's going to fly past and land on something important, probably. Unless... Jaina hits this 90% freeze. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. That is unfortunate. I am now out of mana. Not enough mana. These guys might cause a problem. Actually, I'm out of casting points. Don't die. Survive! No! Our first unit falls. It was felled by my arrogance. I actually almost managed to save it. Is it even really my fault? That's a question. Grace slowed. Oh, if I hit, if I didn't go into guard stance and I hit the slow, then I could have attacked it. That still was fucking OP. I talked about it all last playthrough, and it's going to be talked about all this playthrough too. You better believe it. But new things we can talk about. Bannerman, why keep missing? Hmm? The Ring of Escape. Oh, slip away. So another mod, I think this is part of it, that I got is the Wondrous Item Pack, which adds a whole bunch of new items that we can find from pretty much anything in the game. Or, yeah, pretty much anywhere in the game. And I think this is one of them. This grants the wearer a slip away. When the unit's HP are reduced to zero, it is displaced by three hexes and heals 15, 10 hit points worth once per battle. Jaina is, of course, not the targeted hero type for this item, but she's all I've got. So, here we are. How are we doing on our research? One more turn until we have Blizzard. I probably am going to want more archers. And I definitely want more scouts. Now, I have made things more complicated. That's the word, right? More complicated for myself. Look how hard it is to see anything in this map. Because I have gone with the ice enchantments in an Arctic domain. So the AI is naturally going to have resistances against me, I think. Or did they only get frost weapons? Not sure. But anyway... We'll head home to heal up, and then we can go tap that wonder. And then we can tap this wonder. Honestly... Ooh. Let's heal up and grab this. This blob of stuff. Where are you? I can bear... Okay, I can pop an outpost here, and then absorb that. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be a while before we have this. Ten turns. Do we bother waiting ten turns? We might actually end up waiting ten turns. We'll see. This is probably... This doesn't feel right. This, uh, this name feels wrong. I'm debating, do I go around? Probably not. I don't think I can reach that far. So I can go here, here, here. Okay. The expansion continues. Of course, our Imperium is invaluable. And I can no longer expand without the next town hall, which is fine. I could just force it. In fact, I'm going to. Let's go. Brute force it. Jaina would brute force it. I'm just doing what Jaina would do. Oh, a mage's tower. We didn't see a single one of those in the Blint playthrough, but here we are. The hostile Dondel. We exalted froglocks. God damn it, game. <laughs> Of Dondel will fight for our freedom and stand against anyone who threatens our free city, even when they are led by a Lord Admiral like you. The blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. 
The only high culture in this match are the exalted froglocks. And of course, they're the first ones I find. Now, that's not the actual player, but um, the name alone might be able to tip you off into who it is. I think I'm going to take frost arrows. Let's put this in the pocket. Do we go Archer Build Sheena? That would give us access to wind magic, which... I mean, she never really used it, but you could argue it. The kind Duke, Frederick Stratford of Bakshia, appears before you with a gaunt face. Noble Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore, a dark era has befallen Bakshia. My people are famished, the harvest failed, and our storehouses lie empty. Mothers cannot feed their children. My city guard is mutinous. I fear many of my proud citizens will starve before the sad time is over. Please, Lord Admiral, will you share some of your prosperity with my starving city? Now, Jaina is a good character, despite what she would have you believe sometimes. So Borlas will assist you through this famine. We'll be blocked from growth for two turns, but uh, we will be gaining a vassal very swiftly. Now, I wouldn't say this is a fantastic city, but if they expand away from me like they're supposed to... Patch notes. Game. Then it could be pretty good. Guild Mistress Adela Spark of the Free City Kragmar greets you with curiosity. Salutations, Lord Admiral... Jaina Proudmoore, your reputation precedes you. We may not share your noble convictions, but we trust you will honor Craigbar's territory and independence. Probably not. Oh, probably not. But for now, I can only be in so many places at once, you know. See another you know, free city, wow. All right, so let's get into our territory. Head down this way. We have another pikeman i.e. shield. The city is growing. It grows in wonder. And this is going to be the fastest foundation I've ever put down. Okay. Blizzard is ready. Indeed we do. And we will be saving that. We are now good. Good. There was a time when Jaina was a sickeningly goody-goody two-shoe character. But she's grown more complex over the years. The only downside is she never did commit that genocide. <laughs> and yes, that is a downside in my book. She was about to wipe out Orgrimmar using her tremendous... Orgrimmar, the capital city of the Horde, the opposing faction in Warcraft. She was about to wipe them out with a tsunami she summoned. And uh, a certain individual convinced her not to. Actually, it was two individuals, wasn't it? One and a half. One and a half. <laughs> Duchess Jurous, Jurwasa Cohen of the Free City of Florin greets you with hostility. We enchanting broods of Florin will fight for our freedom and stand against anyone who threatens our free city, even when they are led by a Lord Admiral like you. The blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. We got a Gortons, baby. Question, why the fuck does everyone hate me? Hmm? Everyone's so big mad at me. Is this what I think it is? Ooh. So I can pay... Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Because... Now, this isn't the most efficient trade in the world, but we can pay... 10 gold per turn. And for 15 turns, we gain an increased effectiveness of our Whispering Stone. Which again, only affecting them right now. But it could save us a turn or two. Will it? Don't know. But it could. If we can get this, as soon as we can get this, it's better. That fat Imperium. The most important resource in the game. Unfortunately, my growth is currently blocked, but... That's actually not the worst thing in the world, considering I just expanded. I just upgraded. So now we can expand here. 
which then will allow me to expand here on our next city upgrade. Fantastic. Uh, where's that archer? Give me. As far as fighting forces were concerned, the Kulturans were more... Oh, they didn't really use archers. Did they? I don't think they did. They were really more sword and board. But of course, you know, it's a fantasy world. You can use whatever you bloody well... Oh, you're underground, I see. Use whatever bloody well works, eh? This is the food pickup. I believe that wasn't wasted. I believe it was just put into, like, a reserve. You are heading out over yonder. There is indeed a another watch post. We found Kragmar. Do we wait? Will you be pulled then? No. Do I care? No. A low risk butthole. I care for this one, though. And for the city. So we'll chill here. Let's wait a turn. Frost arrows. Summon Lesser Snow Spirit. Let's get her done. I also want frost blades. Well, I lock this, right? Yeah, we lock that. We grab this. Jaina. Jaina Brownmore. Hmm. Unit deals tremendous and damage on adjacent to another friendly unit. Oh, that's a level one thing now, huh? Was that always there? I don't think it was. We'll grab Restore. It is a heal and a cleanse, so it is deceptively powerful. New Empire developments are available. And we shall... Hmm. I should probably just get this so I don't forget. Knowledge Extraction is supremely useful now. We may even fight a hero in the Ashen Ruins, depends. We may not. We may. But war. War never changes. War is inevitable. Go here. Go here. A high risk battle. Because of that, most likely. Hmm. And there's double conversion. So, what we'll do. Well, we'll do this first. Get our frost arrows out and about, and then we'll drop the blizzard on your face. Now we go in. It's just a risky battle, but I will do it manually. The other archer should be right beside. There we go. So the biggest concern, of course, is the this. I'm invoking a redo. I was fucked over by double mind control. It was two, a, two and a half mind control, in fact. I say and a half because it was resisted. Now, that is a rule I just made up, but I did invoke it in the the very first Erratus playthrough as well. It was a... Um, what was it? It was a temp, one of the, the wonders, the temple wonder, where there's a fish that mind controls you. And I got screwed over. But this time, there's two mind controls. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say no to one of them. At the very least. Then, we're going to see if we can slow this guy. And you know what that means. That means... No retaliation, fair and balanced. Now we go over here, and we'll see if we can freeze her. Why did that hit you as well? Excuse me? Oh, that I'm complaining, of course. Oh, look, it's under defense. Should have done that first. But we stand together. We have frozen both of the mind controlling units. This is an infinitely better start. I'll try and edit down the uh, the first attempts. Oh. At least a little bit. 
I like to use that more as a uh -huh. a cleanser, really, than a damage, a, a heal, a proper heal. Yeah, proper. Yeah. Screw you. I'm hoping that the nymph tries to heal because everything's getting low, and kind of ignores the fact that she could mind control me. 50-50. Beautiful hits. Where was that in my last attempt? This one's so much better. <laughs> the distraction came in from the silver tongue effect. The mind control was resisted. Well done. Well done. Easy game, easy life. I might be able to save this. This spear boy. Ooh, a beautiful hit. This is undead, of course, so you know. I cannot believe this is on a one-turn cooldown. A single turn cooldown. If you run, do you think you'll live? Maybe. Possibly. You're slowed. You cannot flee. You can do nothing but scream. See, this is how this is supposed to go. Not an entire army wipe. <laughs> Mind control, OP. I talked about it a lot in uh, previous previous series, but um, there were so many methods of mind control in previous, well, Age of Wonders 3. I can't speak to one or two. And I know they removed a bunch of them in Planetfall, but there were still methods. And it wasn't like here, where it's temporary mind control. No, 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 no. It was permanent mind control effects. All of them. So it wasn't uncommon to use strategies where you just built armies by mind controlling enemy units. That happened a lot. And it was as infuriating as it sounds. The enemy flees. Do you wish to claim your victory immediately? No, they must suffer. How dare you have a double mind control on turn six? How fucking dare you? Turn six, normal world threat, double mind control. Unbelievable. I was hoping for some elemental here. But I'll take restoration. Technically, Jaina can't do this. Uh, she's not, you know, she's no priest. But um, it's fine. We'll go strain training. A little piglet requires orders. A little piglet is now commandeering a boat. Don't ask how it's doing so. Even the beasts of Kultiris know their way around a ship. Proper shipwrights they be. Alright, let's combine our forces. And I'll probably take a turn to heal here. Turn or two. The Mage's Tower is in. Let us grab... Does it count as a conduit? This is a research post. Oh. Then I will build a conduit here. So we can get the... The monolith. We'll build up the library. Negotiation successful. Oh, well, then mind if I do. Three turns. So, silver tongue fruit plus one, trusting. Okay. During negotiations, Duke Frederick Stratford of Berkshire demand, unexpectedly demands that you share your wisdom and lore with him. Oh, my. The words of Duke Frederick Stratford betray his ambition. I confess that I seek your tutelage in the ways of magic. I can advance my aspirations through your generosity and compassion. Knowledge is what I desire, O oh Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore. I would become a powerful ally to your cause. What say you, my Lord Admiral? 
Will you grant me access to your troves of magic? No. I mean, how many turns? For six turns? <sighs> All right. So, personally, of course, I would say no. Fuck you. However, I will share some of my lore with you. I think that Jaina would be more than happy to teach any Kul Tiran magic if they showed the interest or the potential or the power or whatever. <laughs> Sharing is caring. The map has this like blue hue to it and I don't really like it. <laughs> is it just an effect of it being the Arctic? Oops, I went backwards. The Arctic domain or whatever. Put that in the pocket. This wasn't quite what I wanted, but whatever, it's fine. There's, uh, I think two characters. I'm gonna leave this guy behind, although... You are one rank away from evolving. So one of the bugs that was happening with the tomes was this. In the... Uh, prior to the Watcher update, evolving units had the full list of... Wait, what? The full list of... Of ranks they could get, even though they can't... They obviously evolve a champion, so they can't become legends. In the... With the mod tomes... Any evolution unit would stop at champion and not evolve for whatever reason. Now that they've changed it so that the legend thing is just gone. I don't know what 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 mechanism is at work there, but um yeah, I wasn't too keen on having that happen. Sorry, I don't know why I struggled to explain that so much. As you approach the smoking ruins of a once proud castle, you notice a faded Bakshia sigil above the charred gate. Through the ages, this keep has been home to many beasts and vagabonds, leaving it in ruins. You smell smoke as you enter the gate. A red glow illuminates the corridors close to the courtyard, where cackling laughter and fearful screaming can be heard. There you see the dancing shadows of a pyromancer and her followers. They are setting several pyres ablaze to which frightened animals are tied. It seems as though a band of pyromaniacs have claimed this heap of stone and are now spending their time setting captured wildlife ablaze. This will be a risky battle. Uh, wait, do I have frostblades or anything? No. All oh, right, I didn't get it right away. Okay, that's fine. Let's -a go. So we have four inferno puppies and two pyro monsters. And fire. Can't forget fire. Now, I slotted out the weakened spear boy or a Gortusk piglet. Those are the babies that evolve later. We'll start with this, I guess. The baby pigs that evolve into the Gortusk matriarch, which is a pretty powerful unit. That's do this. Jaina over channel. Question is, do I double buff or do I put someone in a coffin? Hmm. I think I double buff. Or, no, no, no. There we go. We buy time. Precious time. We could buy even more precious time. If we go here... I think you're burning no matter what, my bro, my friend. Actually, if you go here, you're not. So with Jaina, we could freeze... None of them actually get truly stuck. Probably best we still freeze, though. Go for the 50 kill. I think I will. Fucking ow. 
Wait, did you just sit back? Wait, what? Did you just get back up? Did I not just kill this? Uh oh. Well, there goes the Gortex Piglet. Hmm. I'm so confused. What, you didn't want to sidestep and kill your friend or anything? Huh. Weird. Weird how that happens sometimes, you know? Like that! God damn it, game. Uh, well, it's fine. We have a sacrifice in place. They could use their AoE. The Pyromanches do possess one. But it does take all of their AP, so it looks like they have chosen to attack instead. I have never been impressed by the Pyromancers. Never. And I'm still not. I really am not. Oh, looks like you didn't freeze. Hmm. Well, that's fine. Allow me to roll more 50s against you. I hit them eventually, right? Like, eventually I'm going to connect. I don't know why I did that. For some reason I thought I could hit them in melee with my ranged attack because they're also ranged. Might lose the pull arm for this. Nah, they're fumbling. There we go. There we go. Just embrace the flames. They're coming for us all. Doom. Doom. Alright, well, sorry, Gorgeous Piglet. With the Pyromaniacs gone, you and your companions are free to search the rest of the ruins. Your soldiers free the tormented animals who quickly flee the keep. Upon further inspection, you notice that the Pyromancers left behind stashes of scorched loot throughout the building. Among it, you discover a Crusader's Claymore, engraved with the same sigil as you saw above the castle gate. It looks very valuable once you have wiped away the soot. Does it? Does it? Finders Keepers. Usually, that gives you a staff. I think I've gotten the staff of the Magi like three times from that event. And I was really hoping I'd get it again. But here we are. No such luck for me. I think there's quite a lot of wonders, but it's probably because... Silver Tongue Fruit Acquired. From the trade, right? Oh, yeah, now we have, um, you're a vassal now, right? Yes. So our agreement has come to an end, forcibly. So it's all well and good. Could do this train. In fact, I think I will. Eight gold for ten mana. Why not? What are you providing me? Seven gold and three mana. What a great vassal you are. A truly stupendous vassal. Give me that back. All right. Of course. I might. I might go find these guys. I think I know where they are. They're right over here. We might just go brute force that city. That's a tier four city. I don't really have the army to do it, but I believe in something. A little thing called love. I don't remember the the way that song goes at all. I'm sure, that was readily obvious. East berries. Huh. I wouldn't be against going to get this. Hmm. Oh, and this is the last thing. The Rainbow Clover. What's here? Gremlins. Hmm. Mm. 
so many options. It's probably your city gun on Ash will do as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go north, establish our second city first. Then we're going to come south and we're going to take these. They're both really good cities. Wait, can I get Barkshire? Probably not. This can't expand that far without... It has to be fully upgraded and it would have to have the expended range, so that's probably not happening. At least not anytime soon. That's, that's like a, an episode 10 thing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's keep on sailing. Remember, we are experienced seafarers. Summon Lesser Snow Spirit is in. Give me the Frost Blades. A new Empire skill is available. Pacification and Excavation. We will want Excavation, but uh, because I've chosen to go north, that is a later ordeal for us. Ah, oh, the Phantasm Warrior of Doom. You know, I forgot I made this undead. That would explain a lot, actually. Yep, that sure would. Alright, we're going to go to the Forest of Reflection. How are we doing with our recruitment here? Oh, nice. Good, good. We'll take a Tithe Shrine, then we'll take a Tavern. Our happiness is rapidly depleting, so we'll just boost that and then, you know, get this working. Get this working in our favor. I never get frost blades. I don't think I did. I'm doing it now. Silly boy. Silly Jaina. Uh oh. Things have moved. Um. I think you are the start of our second stack. My dude. I think that's what you are. Yeah. Congratulations. You shall lead our second stack to glory. Oh. We met him. I said there was one character you would never guess, and we meet him right away. This is how it is. Hail, Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Lightbringer. Nathaniel Maha. Many Gaudia aim to make war. I aim to make peace. That's not entirely inaccurate, actually. Nathaniel Mar, the Lightbringer, is the god of all paladins in EverQuest. I told you you never guess. <laughs> and oddly enough, the froglocks of EverQuest, they worship Nathaniel Mar. They are his most devoted race. The, the race that is most devoted to Nathaniel Mar, the god of paladins. Uh, which is weird because the froglocks started off as evil. <laughs> and Nathaniel Mar is a good, a good god. Uh, but it is what it is. That's the lore. I didn't make it up. That's what it is. So Nathaniel Mar, of course, a human god thing. And the froglocks just kind of fell under him as time went on. So, he leads the Exalted Froglocks that have quick reflexes and overwhelming trait or overwhelming tactics. I made them as annoying as possible to fight because, um, I love EverQuest. There are only high culture, devotees of good, and experienced seafarers. The Froglocks in EverQuest are actually neutral. They have both a dark and a, a larger light side, but, uh, hey, for now, the devotees of good. He is a chivalrous diplomat, also accurate. An honorable ruler who believes in justice and peace. He also is a lord of war, but he's like the the honorable god of war sort of thing. He likes empires that have many alliances, likes empires with good relationships with free cities, dislikes empires that break treaties, and dislikes empires that start wars. His strategy is to form alliances to never break treaties, to explore, and to expand. Did I turn on allied victory? I think I did. Well, let's be friends. Not for 100 gold, though. <laughs> ah, well, Nathaniel Mar. He's here. There's actually rumors, whispers, of work starting on another EverQuest game. Which would be... something. 
I would very much like that. Why can I not end? Oh, All right, that's fine. I think I want a second farm just for the the boosting. Like this. But of course, we, we do want this gold mine for the the mint. And we'll want a forester as well. I think it went here. Okay. It all works out in the end. I think we'll go tavern. Tavern, bath, bathhouse, masonic hall. I think that's the play. And we're going to want more defenders. Oops, no. Come to me. Come to me if you want to live. Now, the snow spirits are in an interesting... They play an interesting role. Do I just have you walk around with me? I think I do. I don't have the experience gain bonus yet, so... Right? Yes. I'm not using a claymore. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. So, you are Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmore of the Kultirans. Man, I should have said Kultirans. I am not impressed. Tread carefully before I decide that your realm is actually worth conquering. Ah, Garrosh Hellscream. Garrosh did nothing wrong. <laughs> actually, he did quite a lot wrong. Garrosh Hellscream was the instigator of Jaina's dark phase in the Warcraft universe. He led the Horde for a b brief period of time. And um, he dropped a nuke on Theramore, where Jaina is in vanilla classic. Wow. And she was the leader of Theramore for some time. Of course, she wasn't there when he dropped the nuke, but, you know, he blew up the only remnants of Gultiris on Kalimdor, she was big mad about that, and it all just spiraled out of control. So uh, I thought it was only appropriate that Garrosh Hellscream was here. He leads the Horde, the Orcish Horde, who have all been spawn kinified, it looks like. Yep. Ah, oh, that is a ridiculous upgrade. The Horde are strong and ferocious as Orcoids are. Barbarian culture, ruthless raiders, and fabled hunters. That shouldn't be too surprising. He is a demonic warlord. Also not too surprising. I suppose he jumped straight into his final phase where he had consumed the heart of Yashirash. I wasn't going to forget the name of an old god. Test me on him. <laughs> so he's a demonic warlord. So he likes empires that break treaties. He likes empires that execute prisoners. And he dislikes empires that vassals and dislikes empires that have many alliances. He is driven by war, never surrenders, aims to exterminate and to expand it, we shall threaten him. Perhaps uh, <laughs> insults were to be expected. Perhaps they were. And who is this? This is Nathaniel Mar. Okay. So Nathaniel Mar uh, is going to be our friend. And Garrosh is going to be our first enemy. It's looking like. We'll pop in another spirit. Do I just do a full stack of spirits? I might. So the you may notice from their banners... Um, there's some very special looking banners here. That is because of the mod Banner Bonanza. Which uh, I actually tried to use for the Stranger playthrough, but it, it broke everything. Now it's functioning. Which is great. A distraught member of the Kul Tiris Council. See, it makes sense in this context. When it's like Kul Tiris something or other, Kul Tiris makes sense. Or just like the people of Kul Tiris. But when everyone's referring to Kul Tiris, Kul Tiris would make more sense. Yeah. It's bugging me. <laughs> Request an urgent meeting. Terrible news, my Lord Admiral. Our scouts have reported sightings of an army of corrupt souls roaming our lands. Our forebears told legends of these creatures that they are bringers of death, and that seeing such a creature heralds seventy-seven years of bad luck. We must drive away, drive it away immediately, prevent unrest in our cities. Sure, whatever. Oh, hey! I was leaving, but I'm coming back now. <laughs> Probably don't need everybody here, but we're going to have everybody here. Oh. You know what actually would be more appropriate? I just had a great idea. It would be when Jaina was first introduced. 
she, her whole shtick, she, okay, what were the rules in Warcraft 3 for Archmages? They had the Aura of Brilliance, the Arcane Brilliance Aura, they had Blizzard, and then they had Summon Water Elemental. So it would make perfect sense for Jaina to go around with a legion of Frost Elementals. And I'm going to do it. I've convinced myself. Military Engineering, you know it, I know it, this is mandatory. Everyone gets this. Every, I don't care what you are. Everyone should get Military Engineering. It is one of the best early Imperium pickups in the game. It makes your outposts cheaper, so you can just plop them down. And it allows you to instantly expand and grab things. And look who it is, ladies and gentlemen. He's back. He couldn't stay away. So you are the notorious Jaina Proudmoore. I suggest you keep your distance from my lands. Otherwise, life here may become very unpleasant for you. Was that a threat, Blint the Underdelver? The one who got away. Blint the Underdark was just a fraction of the many Blints in the multiverse. <laughs> the meme will never die. Anyway, as expected, Blint is a competitive merchant who likes empires with a stronger economy, likes empires that trade, dislikes empires without relationship to free treaties, and dislikes empires that break treaties. He likes to trade, has hard bargains, and likes to expand and to exploit. We're going to stay neutral with Blinty Boy. Blinty Boy shall remain neutral. All right. New rules. What does it take to do this? That in the pocket. After a tense and long march, your army comes face to face with the roaming corrupt souls. The sight of the terrible creatures cause fear to ripple through your cold tier and army. The deafening silence betrays the hesitation of your troops. Their morale will not hold. The corrupt souls have noticed your troops and prepare to attack. What will you do? Obviously, just attack. Now that the corrupt souls are gone from your land, the Kultiris Council contacts you again. Marvelous work, Jaina Proudmoore, just marvelous. We managed to contain any panic with regard to the corrupt soul sightings, so it seems we are in the clear. Well, thanks to you, of course. The Kultirans will hear of your victory. Perhaps our superstitious beliefs can be transformed into a virtue of our people. Hmm. Two turns or one turn of him. Oh, yeah, we'll take the two turns. This victory shows the Kulturans should build better defenses. They should. They were master builders. Their naval yards were the envy of the world. Leave me alone. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Don't do it. All right, it looks like Matthias has just fucking claimed the bottom. What is your name, right? Nathaniel. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. EverQuest lore is wild. Alrighty, righty We are still on Tier 1. This will be our second Tier 1 tome. Oh, and what do we want to get? I was actually kind of torn. I think I'm going to grab the Tome of Warding. And the reason is... Well, one, I don't use it very often. Let's be honest. The second reason is the Kulturans, when they're building their ships, I use this excuse for the runesmith, right? But part of the reason their ships are the envy of the world is because they use magic of the ocean to ward their ships against storms, and they can navigate rough seas like no one else in the world. The Zandalari navy is supposed to, like, oppose them, but let's be honest, their entire navy goes completely under. They lose the naval encounter. Not even close. So Tom of Warning it is. Those who master the arcane are as a soothing breeze upon their allies, cushioning them in a protective blanket of air, buffeting away blows, and harnessing the lightning to smite those who dare to come too close. A master of warding will find a myriad of ways to keep their subjects safe. 
You can kind of see this in the art here, but this is part of the, the culture mod where they basically took all of the units from the the tomes and they tried to give them aesthetics that were closer to the culture that you are. So this Phantasm Warrior actually looks very feudal, like almost as like a drowned unit, which would be quite appropriate. So I am going to lock the Phantasm Warrior and I'm going to grab Magical Wards and I have no mana. A rally has begun. Ooh, give me a defender. Thank you. That was so kind of you. Good sir. So where's Blint? How did Blint find me? There's Nathaniel. There's Garrosh. No, this is me. Why is my star red? A new... I'm, I should... I'm, nope, I'm not even going to try. Rest in peace, Christopher Lee. I'm not even going to try and mimic your voice. A new pawn appears before me. You look like a god here, but are you ready to face the likes of me? How do you greet the white wizard Saruman of many colors? Yep, it's Saruman. I thought about having Blint the Underdark, but then I was like, wait a minute. I can make Saruman as the dark culture. And boom, here he is. Saruman leads the Urukai, of course. The corrupted... Weren't they elves? The Urukai are like evolved goblins. Goblins! <laughs> They're like evolved and twisted for their goblins. And goblins are like twisted elves in uh, the Lord of the Rings lore. So the Urukai are orcoids that are strong with overwhelming tactics. No surprise there. The dark culture, scions of evil, and ritual cannibals. Because meat's back on the menu, boys. It was never off the menu, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. So the Urukai are here. And Saruman, this is incredibly appropriate, is a sinister spy. He likes empires that break treaties. He likes empires with a weaker economy. He dislikes empires with stronger research, and he dislikes empires that trade. His strategy is to be covert. What does that mean? Can I get this to stay? I can. The ruler is prone to making pronouncements and calls to war more often, but is less eager to answer them. Oh, great. He likes to gain vassals, he likes to explore, and he likes to exploit. Interesting. I'm not going to threaten or do anything with you. I like how... We've met basically all my potential enemies. And Nathaniel. We're friends with Nathaniel. You and me, Nathaniel. You and me, Nathaniel. <laughs> I would like a friend. Please. You and me, buddy. This has always confused me. These weird contact ruler things. But uh, I wanted to do diplomacy in this playthrough because I have been informed. This looks weird. I have been informed that it's harder than before to do diplomacy. It's been kind of wonk. There's Blinty Boy wonky since the update. So we'll see. Chief Des Iska Blood Spitter. Blood Spiter? Spitter? Uh, the Free City Fangvale greets you with some reverence. Salutations, Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmore. Your reputation precedes you. It gives us hope to meet a Lord Admiral who shares in our beliefs. We look forward to learning from you, and we trust you to respect Fangvale's territory and independence. What? Huh. You are good masters of chaos. My stone was kicked out of here. That means only one thing. Yeah, they're under siege. <laughs> like, that can only mean one thing. Bad things. Aha! And here he is. Hail, Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmore. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Prince Arthas Minifel. Many Guardia make war. I aim to make peace. I had to do it. I had to include him. Arthas Minithel, Jaina's sweetheart. Her first sweetheart. <laughs> the prince of the kingdom of Lordaeron and the future Lich King. But this is from the past. This is from a time when Arthas was still Arthas, the young paladin who led his people with pride, honor, and an ever-so-touch-of-young arrogance. 
So Arthur's Minithel leads the human kingdom of Lordaeron with fast recuperation and adaptable, though I believe those are just the basic human traits. He also is a feudal culture. He is a chosen uniter and an imperialist. The kingdom of Lordaeron was one of the largest, if not the largest, human kingdom in the Eastern Kingdoms of Azeroth before... Uh, before the Cult of the Dam started their activities and Arthas became the first Death Knight. Not the first Death Knight, that's incorrect. That was Gorfiend. Gorfiend was the first Death Knight. Before Arthas became a Death Knight and then became the next Lich King. But now, as I mentioned, we, this is the past Arthas. He is currently a chivalrous diplomat, which is not entirely inaccurate. He likes empires that have many alliances, likes empires with good relations with free cities, dislikes empires that break treaties, and dislikes empires that start wars. His strategy is to form alliances to never break treaties to explore and to expand. We will send a welcoming gift to Lord Aron. He is also strength rank number one right now. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> Don't ask me how. I have no idea. Or oh, are these guys going to benefit from both Frostblade and Frost Arrow? Interesting. Where are they? Where are my boys? My children. Yeah, they are. Wow. Okay. Cool. I'd love to summon more, but my upkeep is starting to feel it. Mm -hmm. It's starting to feel the pain. Wasn't I going to do like a market or something? I think I was. Oh, dear. I still don't have a storehouse. Oh, my goodness gracious. Or a blacksmith. No wonder this is taking so fucking long to recruit. Okay, so I don't need to queue that up. We'll just speed this up, get out of the scout. Uh, sure. Whatever. I consider you my friend, Lady J Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore. I consider you my friend too. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, you're my friend. You're my friend. Where are we? Up here. Pronounce friendship. So you seek friendship with the exalted froglocks. We shall see. We're, you're already my friend, Nathaniel. Get over it. The declaration of friendship, in case you have forgotten, a refresher for myself as well. Whenever a friendship is declared, that will steadily increase your relationship by plus 300. If it is declared on both sides, that will increase it up to a total of 400. It costs 10 gold per turn to upkeep this declaration of friendship. And now... The Declaration of Friendship will always cost 100 gold to initiate. Instead of having that variable wild cost thing that I had before, which was dumb. I, I'm a big fan of that change. Huge fan. Tremendous fan. I might have to break Barkshire. That wasn't something I thought I would do, but I might have to. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Go to the storehouse. Uh -huh. Get moving. <clears throat> Depends on how annoying they plan on being. Because... I am going to go fishing guild. I'm just trying to get some, you know, land-based economy first. But I'm going to go fishing guild. So if they're in the way, oh yeah, by the way, Banner Bonanza, this is the Lordaeron symbol, the Horde symbol. Perfect. And I, there wasn't, could you believe there wasn't a white hand symbol? Slacking. <laughs> no, no, my, the favorite bit that I have about the Banner Bonanza mod is that it has a symbol for all of the Chaos Gods, even some of the minor ones. So... The Skaven have their own symbol. The Dowie. What's going on over here? The Dowie Czar have their symbol. Good work. Good work. How are we doing? We need one more. Hmm. One more for a full legion. A rivalry was declared. Oh. Think of this as an official announcement that I, War Chief Garrosh Hellscream, consider you. An enemy. It's hard for me to do the orc voice. I can. 
It's hard. I'd rather not. <laughs> Okay, I guess we've, I mean, we knew that was gonna happen, right? Like, we saw this coming from a mile away. I think we all did. It's probably better for everyone right now if I don't summon another water elemental, despite the fact that I want to. Where are we missing? We're missing two more. Two, oh, I know her there. And they're probably over here. Probably over here. A message was received. What do we got? We may not be so different after all, Jaina. Your actions are promising. By all means, continue. She likes that I have relations with free cities. Well, that's nice. But I can't help but notice you are now indifferent. Ah, you are threatened by me. Why? Bro, I'm the bottom of the bottom. You're at least in the middle. Your advisor mentions that Boralus announced costly plans to import food. You contact the city. An administrator of Boralus welcomes you in a good mood. I know what you mean to discuss, my Lord Admiral, and you can be proud. Following your benevolent decrees, Boralus... I did not spell that correctly, even remotely, did I? Declared the important the importation of ample meats and produce for our hungry citizens. The best part? The city is paying for it all. Are we sure that's the best part? The people of Borlas intend to mirror the generosity you display. However, Borlas will be spending your gold. Ah... <sighs> I don't think... Alright, sure, whatever. Approve the plan. Gold doesn't buy happiness. Are you sure about that? I could use it to get more good points, but... Okay, we'll get good boy points. And then we will immediately annex that. Cool. Oh. oh. Oh, cut it close. But we did it. Perfectly calculated. Mm. Uh -huh. Can I run down with this? Because if so, I might be able to get a... Well, maybe not. Ah, we'll run it down. You enter a forest of glowing crystal formations, showing eerie reflections of you and your troops. As you keep going through the forest, memories overwhelm you. Reflections of yourself fade into visions of the past, present, and future. Into memories of the good and bad things that you have wrought. Your troops weep and wail, apologizing to their own mirror images. Then the visions start to take physical form, as creatures appear from the crystal maze. Your troops scramble and shout in confusion as their reflections come to life and reveal themselves to be mirror mimics. Oh boy. Alright, so the mirror mimics. Um, They are... Peculiar. Is that the word? That's the word we'll go for. The mirror mimics are peculiar because they themselves are not very good. They basically take on the the form of someone else, of one of their enemies. And then if that unit is a lower tier, they gain bonus stats on top of that. And if it's of a higher tier, they have less stats. But I mean, you know, they're tier four, so there's only one tier higher. Oh, I guess my concern... Do I even bother? I don't think I do. I'll let Jaina try. Got the slow. What is this? Magically charged. Alright, I'm in. They're magically delicious. The other annoying thing about them is that they have a tendency. Oh, beautiful. Oh, right, magically charged. Yes, that's what that means. Good. 
Uh, not tendency. When they break their their mimic, they can still fight. I'm pretty sure. But can you be frozen now? Because if so, was that worth it? Time to find out. Yep. Good job. Wait, that's not what that. That's not what I meant to say. Mm, you're slowed, which means I can walk away from you safely because that's fucking overpowered. Let me know when you tire of hearing about me complaining about this. I mean, am I really complaining? I don't think I am. Or maybe I am. Maybe I am complaining. I'm never going to remember to use that shadow defense correctly. This beamer might die, but that's okay. We have, like, two defenders following up, and plus all of my... My legion of, uh... Cross elementals. So close, and yet so far. Alright. Just back him up. See? Tell you, he comes back. Screw you. Well, good news. I can safely move back at least. He doesn't come back with with full action, just partial action. Okay. Well, no big deal in the end. I'm just a spearman who couldn't tank all day. Wow. Actually, hold on. I can do this. Wakey, wakey. Eggs and bakey. Okay. I mean, I remembered I could do that. See? As the ambush of the strange reflections dissipate, your troops sigh in relief. The forest of reflection pulsates with a new energy. You see a path with many forks up ahead, each one leading to freedom. The crystals shimmer and your troops smile as the new reflections show fond memories from their past. If only for a moment, they find solace and peace within the forest of crystal. You go to take a closer look at the crystals yourself. The reflection of the forest of reflection now show fond memories of the past. You gaze into the crystal and remember. Our first coin. We might actually need this annoying though it is. Oh boy. Do I do it? That would be a hella fast tier 3 unit. I'm not going to have Pack Hunter Synergies, though, which is kind of annoying. Hmm. First training with a weapon gives us the Armor of the Line Breaker. This is another modded piece. Plus one, plus one defense and resistance. In a one hex radius, enemies lose defense mode, retaliation attacks, and have a 90% chance to lose 10 morale. Wow. And Charging Leap. That's pretty cool. Some mana. Or remember the first day you became a Lord Admiral amongst your peoples. Aw, that's nice. Um, I'm gonna go with the gold just because we are hurting a lot. I'm actually more happy about the money, or the, the knowledge. This probably isn't too shocking, to be honest. Hi! Duke Nashton Kingfisher of the Free City Ridge Keep greets you with a friendly smile. Welcome and many greetings, Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore. It seems we share much, and we look forward to a strong relationship, friendship, between Ridgekeep and you. Together, we could do great and honorable deeds. I threw in a little bit of scave in there. <laughs> Despite the fact that once again they are mouses of chaos, and once again they're acting all goody goody too sure. Okay. Uh, I need to put an outpost here. Like right now. This is juice. Outpost grabs this Arcanium ore. We and we annex up to get the forest. That is 
That is supreme. Supreme! Cool. Uh -huh. Of course, now I have to get the arcane anymore, but we can take a turn to replenish. It's fine. We're off to find the wizards, the wonderful wizards of who's left. It appears we have located Lordaeron. I should probably have looked up how to spell Borlas. Borlas. Kind of bugging me. Ever so slightly. Sure, just follow, follow your Lord Admiral. Actually, you probably should go home. Probably. Drain up around more. Experience later. Let's go. Now we need to borrow all of you. Mm -hmm. I have... Oh. I'm keeping the healer. There we go. Excellent. Now, every turn that passes, she will be providing them with experience. It's not a lot of experience. It's only plus two, but that adds up over time. They can evolve into strong big boys. We can now build roads. Fantastic. And I'm going to grab another stone. Farms grant additional food. Nope. We can most of our food from the, the fishies. The fishies. Blint is competing for me with this, so... Not ideal. You lost your air. Are you still besieged? I think you are. All right, rats. Prove your worth. Another ruler. Blint has begun negotiating. A rivalry was declared on me. Saruman. Uh, I would declare a rivalry with good old Garrosh Hellscream right now. If. If. I wasn't broke. Yeah, we have we have minimal income, but I have a lot of army for my my turn, so we can just waddle around as a doom stack for a little bit. Tell me I won't. Okay, so there's Lordaeron. You're expanding this way. I imagine one player is down here and one player is over here. Of the two, we haven't met yet. You are. Oh, you want to go back this way. Even though it's going to take you forever. That's a bone dragon. That's a bone daddy. No diggy diggy. Okay, so you... Up. Grab. Fantastic. Marvelous, even. Go there. This is a low-risk battle. Let us secure the dub. Now, I could excavate this, and I might. How we do? Easy game, easy life. The Arcanium Orb will grant us 10 production. Irrelevant, but 10 mana. Very helpful. In fact, we might be able to pop this fully of these ice elementals, but I think I should keep one, one bannerman here. So what we'll do is out of the kindness of my heart. I know that's a strange thing for me to say, isn't it? We will diggy diggy. This will aid our newfound rat-like friends. Make support units, support abilities, grant bolts. Oh, that's actually really good. I'm sorry, Phantasm Warrior, you're going to have to wait. And we will want Palisade Walls. Can I even afford them? Just put them in there. It's fine. A treaty has expired. That's fine. I'm broke anyway. Could do... No, 25 mana is way too much. Way too much. Way. Way too much. A Holy Orb. That's actually better. I think I don't think there was ever an instance where Jaina used like holy magic. Before you can approach an army from Ridge, Ridge Keep that occupies an iron deposit, 
It's Duke Nashton Kingfisher. Oh. I'm sorry. Wait, this is yours? What do you want with my bone golems? Nashton warily sizes up your army to assess the situation. They guard this iron deposit per my orders. The troops of the Duke nervously observe your exchange and appear ready to attack if necessary. State your reason for coming to my iron deposit, Nashton Kingfisher asks. No, nope, you can have it. Sorry. I, uh, I thought it was an enemy for experience. My bad. You can do whatever you want, bro. I'm leaving. Time to go. Hopefully we don't become enemies. Because my outpost is vulnerable. That's fine. I do recognize, however, that I have blocked out uh, <laughs> your exit. I guess you had to go over there if you wanted to. But you're, you're stuck now. Bruh. That must be Saruman. Ah, Saruman is taking this. I see. I see. Are you the one over here, Saruman? You are an NPC. What? Game. You're not serious. Uh, fine. Aha! So you are Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmore of the Kultirans. I am not impressed. Tread carefully before I decide that your realm is actually worth conquering. You aren't impressed, huh, Kael'thas? You didn't say that when we were in school together, and you really wanted to tap it. This is Kael'thas Sunstrider, the prince of the Sindori, the Blood Elves. Now, I'm not particularly pleased with how my uh, rendition of him is, but this, I felt this was the best I could do. Kael'thas is another complicated character from Warcraft, as so many of them are, and... This is kind of the version of him at the end of Warcraft 3 before he goes completely mental. Kael'thas and Jaina met in Dalaran, where they were studying magic together. But the Blood Elves, or they were previously the High Elves, were wiped out by Arthas when he sacked Kael'thalos and corrupted the Sunwell with undeath and stuff. The ones that survived became Blood Elves, and they were in search of a new source of power. And Kael'thas led them to the Outlands, where they began siphoning the power of the Nether and all sorts of dark and terrifying shite. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the Blood Elves, the Sindori, being all fancy, are elves that are mana addicts with... Mana Addicts and Powerful Invokers. I was reading Mana Addicts from here. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Mana Addicts and Magical Wards? How? What? So they're Mystic Culture, Mana Addicts, Powerful Evokers, and their traits are keen sighted Arcane Focus. They are all in on the magic, and uh, I imagine they're going to hurt quite a lot. <laughs> be quite painful. He is a Strategist Warlord, which makes perfect sense. He likes empires that have summoned units, likes empires that have defeated other empires, dislikes empires that trade grievances, and dislikes empires with stronger research. He is driven by war, will never surrender, and aims to exterminate, and to expand. He is now Strength Rick 1. And he doesn't like me. Because for some reason he feels threatened. Arthas has been kicked down to rank 2. Could be friends, bro. Nope. Sure cannot. Okay. I love the Blood Elves. I played a Blood Elf for a long time. Utopricalis. You know, the Blood Elves would name a city something fucked up like that. Ooh, this will be amazing here. Where he put. Oh, look at. Look at this. This is the earliest special province I think I've ever built. I think so. But it when you build it, it is a research post that gets plus 10 knowledge, but plus 3 mana per adjacent snow or ice province. 
putting it he here, excuse me, gives it a whole bunch of adjacent snow and ice provinces. So, um, it makes perfect sense. That's my only quarry, um, which is, well, actually I have one here, but I was planning on changing this, but I might not now. I might just let that ride. Might just let that ride. I'd also like to build up a, a navy sooner, eventually. I think we're going to go back home. But all things in time, as they say. There's an astral rift over there. Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up. Hmm, you're not going to attack me, are you? Please don't. We may, uh... I may lose that guy. I, I need this before they get it. Do I build another conduit? Let's get a research post going. This actually should count. Whatever, it's fine. I need to research faster anyway. An evil presence lingers in these lands. You don't sing. Please don't attack me. Please don't do it. Don't do it! This should attack anything within its domain. Yep, here it comes. Mother trucker. I'm gonna try and survive. I don't think I can. I'm gonna try. It's worth noting that the ice does delay... ...movement quite a lot. I wonder how far off the map I can go. I guess worst case scenario, I can always retreat. But I don't want to. I want to retain my position here. And in case you've forgotten, if the AI doesn't attack me in X amount of turns, then it will draw. Can I freeze the dragon? Maybe. All right. I think it's five turns in Age of Wonders 4. Only one of them can reach me. Well, I'm down here. Come on. No. Please. No. Okay. Well, I tried. I got so close to. It was way easier in Age of Wonders 3 to do that. Alas. I hope our final friend isn't over there. I say friend. I don't I don't know what they're going to be. <laughs> Could be a friend. Could be a foe. Okay, that's like a dead end. I can't give you a hint as to who it is, though. Since I knew I'd be playing as Jaina, I uh, wanted to make sure that all of her old flames were in the game. And Jaina romanced three people from the moment she was introduced to now in WoW's history. I don't think I need search spellcasting, although it would be helpful. I'm going to take it. It'll be very helpful now considering the the changes to these things, casting points, and why that was so hard all of a sudden. I'm barely winning and I don't want to boost, but I may have to. We'll see. What do you mean? I know. The, Blin's been negotiating with these guys for ages. Okay, I'll boost. Fine. Fine. I was insulted. You think befriending Fangvale will help you secure your path to victory? It will be my empire that rises above all others. Not you too, Arthas. 
Arthas. Arthas. I wanted to be your friend, Arthas. I can't watch you do this, Arthas. It's not as bad as purging an entire city of all its living citizens, but it's second close. Insulting me. Uh, oh, look, there's another haste over here. I recognize my transgression, Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmore. I hope there is no bad blood between us. I hope so, too. Wait. Such an, oh, yeah, he sent an insult. Let's declare friendship. During diplomatic negotiations, Chief Des Iska Bloodspitter of Thangvale sends you a bottle filled with an unknown substance. Oh, great. Oh, Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmore, we crooked warriors feel blessed by your presence. In anticipation of our new pact, we had this small gift sent to you. Iska Bloodspitter holds up a glass. In our culture, we share this drink when we forge a bomb. She takes a sip and coughs heavily, waiting for you to return. The gesture. You open the bottle and feel nauseous from the smell alone. Is your relationship with Thangvale truly worth this? Make a toast. And there he is. We found them all. Fortunately, I can't send a welcome gift because I have no money. Greetings, Lord Admiral Jaina Brownmore. May wisdom guide your path in this realm. This is Calicos, affectionately nicknamed Calic. The aspect of the blue dragonflights. The blue dragonflights are dragonoids. Well, lizardmen. That's what they're called, right? Lizardmen. Of the mystic culture, so there are two mystic players on the map. Ancient wise ones, and they are talented collectors. They are also keen-sighted and arcane-focused. The blue dragonflight were the guardians of magic in Azeroth. And their original aspect, Malagos, went insane. And we killed them! <laughs> Calicos ended up taking up the mantle later. And romancing Jaina, well, for many years, actually. When I mentioned earlier that one and a half people stopped Jaina from flooding Orgrimmar, Calicos was the one. The half was Thrall. Like, Thrall was holding her back using the magic of the elements. He's a shaman. But it was Calicos that ultimately convinced her not to do it. And he is a pure sage, which is perfectly accurate. They like empires with a weaker military, likes empires with good relations with free cities, dislikes empires that break treaties, and dislike empires with a stronger economy. His strategy is to favor treaties. Wars must be justified. He likes to explore and he likes to expand. We will be good friends with Calicos. I don't know if they ever... I think they amicably split. Jaina and Calicos, I think. Because they're both doing their own thing. Like, Calicos is unraveling Malagos' secrets and... The ghost of Sindragosa, or whatever the hell that thing is. The simac simulacrum. Simul simulacrum? Sim the copy of Sindragosa's consciousness. <laughs> whatever that thing is. Ooh, that was a hero. Give me that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'll take the crown as well. And of course, Jaina's leading the Kiltiran, so. Ooh, static shield. I realize I just, I've locked the, I locked the Phantasm Warrior for several turns and then just kind of like, oh, I see a new spell. Give me the orb. Wait, did I get the other orb? I did, which means I should be using them all. There you go. Kragmar was defeated. The remains of Draco the Traveler. Have been collected. The Thunderbow. The life steals from the fact that he's undead. Don't get that twisted. Interesting. And the chest plate of vitality. I'll take you. And the money. I'll wear this for now. Oh yeah, I can be mounted now. And yeah, that kind of it's fine. Negotiations have succeeded for the Pact of Loyalty. We have flown past Blint. Which will upset him, but uh, I'm sure you all know by now, when it comes to upsetting Blint, I am the master. 
Tis my speciality. Blint, don't you... Oh, Blint. Blint. How are these? Ah, oh, of course. Uh, uh, fucking course. Actually, this would be a great place to establish this. You think? Hold on. Let me think about this for a second. City here. Expand to this. Expand that. Hmm. I don't think I actually want the city there. I wonder how this mountain's gonna interfere with my city. Because I don't if I if I expand a city here, I don't think I can grab this province. This is an uninhabitable province. Which means well I guess I could grab this and then like go around. Maybe blow up this mountain later to go around this way if I needed to. Uh -huh. It might be better for now to just put down an outpost. And then go south to take my cities. Oh. Or... Go full seafarers here. Uh -huh. Maybe the play. Well done. I'm glad I don't have to fight everything right now. We grab endurance training. Soon, my children will grow. Huh? My spears have all evolved. That's one of the downsides of the feudal culture. They don't have like permanent spears. Their tier one unit is a spear, but they all evolve into these shield boys. And then their tier three unit is a knight. There's actually a mod that I debated using that um, adds units to the cultures on each tier and adds a, four, a tier four culture unit. And I was really interested in using it because I've always felt like the cultures needed their own, like, more units. But there was one reason I didn't. And that's because, I mean, the AI also gains access to them, which I think is good. But the main reason I didn't do it is because... Knowledge. <laughs> Not knowledge. Is because the dark tier 4 unit gets a mind control. And the AI, the reports... On the mod, we're saying that the AI spams the shit out of those. And I just didn't want to deal with it. That might be a poor excuse, but it's the excuse I have. Now the question is, do I turn this into a city and go full Fisher? Or do I not? Hmm. I don't think this would be a bad spot. Uh, it just would be in contention with Blint a bit, which is kind of sketch. And I won't be able to take this city as well. I might just leave this as it is, to be honest. i just put Palisade Walls here. I do kind of want to clear this. Hmm. Clear this. Claim this forest as well. Let me see the province. I fucking bloody can't. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll grab this, break this, grab this, annex that, and by which I mean pacification. Force March. We are getting there. 22 turns until advanced logistics. Uh, so if this... Hopefully this... Oh, it's not. I say hopefully this gold mine is on it, but that's fine. We'll put another outpost over here to grab this. Put that in our control. And then we'll be heading south and hope that Blint keeps his hands to himself for a while. I'm not actually sure where Calicos is. Maybe he's over here? We'll see. We will see. Yeah. Sears and Duca rise when to the free city of the Starlit Sanctuary greets you with a sage, vaguely insufferable expression. Yep, that's a Sindori. 
Salutations, Jaina Proudmoore. The Sindori of Starlit Sanctuary extend a hopeful wish of mutual neutrality. Our diviners foretold of your presence in this land. We seek only to further our understanding of the arcane arts and remain amenable to fostering a mutually beneficial relationship with the almighty Empire. If we cannot, we hope that we can at least stay out of each other's way. That is a tier 4 settlement, though. I might try and snatch this from the clutches of of Cal of Kael'thas. I'm sure he'll be pleased as punch to hear that strategy, but I think I might try it. I might. We will see. Let's get Enchanted Crow Companion. We'll start staves of wardings first and then magic awards after that, because one's faster than the other, of course. Rainbow Clover acquired, which means all we need is the haste berries. We do know where two happen to those are Archon Blood. Ooh, this is a two for one. This is a um Bronze Wonder. Twofer. It's over here, right? Yeah, haste berries there. Then we can immediately get the Imperial Essence. Which will give us a lot of wait, what? Garrosh and Blinter at war? Ooh, that's good for me. That is good for me. Tax cooperation with Rich Keep. This might not even be a city worth doing. Um, that's fine. I was insulted. I warn you not to disturb me too much, lest our next meeting take place on the battlefield. Lord Admiral Jaina Proudmoore. I would ask how you fare, but honestly, I do not care about your well-being. Why was that? Okay, sure. I mean, I figured you wouldn't. Sure. Let us see the consequences of our actions for this first combat. And then... I think... Really? I think that's a great place to go. What happened, Blint? I was just thinking about you, Jaina. How fair are treaties and trade deals? Perhaps we can improve them. Didn't you hate me? They are in need of an ally. Oh, I see how it is, fucking two-faced blint bastard. He went from like negative 400 to 345 because now he's in a war. Now he needs friends because he has none. Just war with Garrosh. Well, fuck you. Enjoy your war with the Horde. Should have been dismantled anyway. That was such a great cutscene. But thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this first special two-hour episode for Jaina Proudmoore, the daughter of the sea. I'm sorry I couldn't get the modded tomes in here. Or more accurately, sorry, I was reluctant to. Hopefully the snow spirits will do it for you instead. In their place. But thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you to the patrons and the channel members who support the channel. I greatly appreciate you. If you'd like to stay updated and happy channel, feel free to join the description down below. And I will see you next time as we pursue our alliances with Mithanil Ma, the Lord of the Paladins, and our old flame, Arthas Minifel. And perhaps our current flame. We'll see. Bye!